Hello, Justine D'Andre here with Bible Journaling Ministries Creative Team. And today we're going to be working with the printables from Song of Solomon 2-1. And you will get these in your Momentum uh, kit if you subscribe to that each month. Or if you don't, if you want to check it out in the store at BibleJournalingMinistries.com, you can purchase it there. Today we're going to be using some watercolor paints. We're going to be using glue, whether it's wet glue or glue stick, ribbon to match. I use black ribbon, but you can use whatever you have. A little bit of string to tie our bow, a black um, paint marker, a stencil for your background, whatever it is that you want to use for it, and then um, a uh, page protector to cover your pages when we're painting, a paintbrush. I use two different sizes, the half inch and the quarter inch, just a regular flat paintbrush. And then we are going to use some scissors and maybe a pencil. So um, yeah, if you're ready, let's go ahead and get on started. I know I told you before that um, I used to, or I work at a flower shop during the holidays, so floral designing and flowers are part of my my passion, and um, I kind of get drawn to doing flower arrangements. So I thought it would be nice to go ahead and to draw a um, container, like a um, a vase of some sort, or a um, what are they called? Oh, I can't think right now, but um, I'm starting by a centerpiece. I think maybe that's what I'm talking about. Uh, so I'm starting by just freehanding kind of the style that I want, like a pedestal type vase. And this does not have to be perfect. This is just um, for you to be able to put in your Bible. So do I, I want to encourage you to, to draw and do the best that you can. So we're going to first kind of play with, around with it on a piece of paper. And then um, I've decided that I like one side of the vase a little bit better than the other. So I figured why not just fold the paper in half and cut it because I tend to have an issue with um, making things equal like the same on each side so I'm just gonna go over it and pick which side I like better I'm gonna fold it in half so that both sides of the vase or the container will be um, will match um, this is just a nice easy way to get a symmetrical uh, vase without trying to draw it on the same on both sides sometimes I don't mind because you know I like organic stuff like that when it's just natural and it doesn't have to be perfect but um, for this purpose I am cutting it um, kind of like you do hearts you know how you fold the paper in half and you do the the heart so that they're symmetrical that's kind of what we're doing here and if you want to cut a few different ones just to see what size that you want to depending on what size page you're uh, you're going to be using you can do that this one's not that big but I am using the interleave Bible I, I tend to go to that Bible more than any other um, because I'm I've been in the mood to do more uh, bigger uh, areas than just the Bible uh, margin and um, if you're just starting out though I do there's no reason why you can't just go ahead and start in the Bible margin I mean that's all uh, I think most of us have started there you know journaling in the um, the margins and if you do that <clears throat> you can do this technique and you don't have to do uh, to use the the full page or the vase part uh, you can make it a little bit smaller or just make a cluster of flowers maybe something like that so I um,
Let's go ahead and add a layer of gesso on to the page. We're going to use a clear gesso. Um, you might want to just be aware when you're buying gesso because I remember when I first bought gesso it was a clear transparent gesso and um, it had like a grit to it and um, that's good for when you're um, doing mixed media um, for surface, surface preparation but for um, in your Bible you want to have just the without any grit or anything and when we're using watercolors you definitely want to put a layer of gesso on there because it helps to move around the watercolors so we're gonna go ahead and let this dry up the technique that we're going to be doing is fairly simple we're just going to be using a stencil and some watercolor but you're going to see uh, on the bottom of my page as we start that what what I do is I'm trying I was being daring because I had one thought in my mind and then um, when I tried doing it it didn't work out so it took me a, a couple tries to figure um, figure out exactly how I was going to use the watercolor when we're placing this um, down I'm using a little bit of washi tape to just um, hold it there. You don't want to put washi tape, uh, the whole washi tape on your page because it will rip it. So you just, I just put a little bit on the edge of the, um, uh, I forgot what it's called, my brain. The template there, it's ba It's not actually a template, it's, it's um, holding that space so that we can draw in it. It'll come to me, I promise. I don't know. So I was going to try a reverse watercoloring here and I made it too wet and then I I really didn't like it so um, you at this point you can go ahead and add water and take it off I just didn't think quick enough but if your paint is still wet you can add water to it and you can um, you know make it really um, washed out so you don't see it like I did then I'm just going through and I'm just kind of playing a little bit to see. So what it is is you don't want your brush, when you're doing the stencil technique, you don't want your brush to be very wet. You want to use a lot of the um, watercolor and uh, you want it to be intense, an intense color, but dr like more on a dry brush type of uh, So the dry brush technique. So I masked, I remember what the word was, the masking of the little vase. I thought that I needed to go around to kind of mark out where I wanted the masking to be, but then I wasn't thinking because what you'll do is um, you'll go right over with the stencil. You leave the masking on and you just continue going over it with the stencil. You don't have to do like I just did. Um, I like the way it came out only because it gave some extra, which you'll see towards the end, extra color to my page. It's not all one, uh, it's not all just the stencil. That's why when I make mistakes, I don't worry too much about it. I learn from them, I use them, I go back, um, just like with my notes, and I, I, I remember the time that I was studying the word or that I was doing a project. Um, mistakes are not a bad thing, you, you know, that's just how we learn through our mistakes. So I finally get the technique going here. It's definitely, uh, I, I definitely wanted more pigment, so I, I went heavier on a drier color, colored uh, watercolor, on the watercolor. <laughs> um, not much uh, water on my brush. Just a different style technique to do it if you only have watercolors and you don't have um, acrylics. And I kind of chose the 
yellow mustardy kind of background color. You can um, change up the color too if you wanted to use more than one color. When I envision this, this is kind of how I envisioned it for myself. And I'm just moving this stencil around. Now this is where you would leave your masking on and then you wouldn't have to worry about going over it. So don't take your masking, which is that piece of paper that I had on there with the washi, don't take that off until you're completely done stenciling. And like I said, you don't have to outline it the way I did. Um, I was just kind of playing with it a little bit. Um, so you don't have to do that. You just, the masking is there for that purpose. So I want this to look like the vase, so I'm going to add some, some lines to it. I'm going to go over it with pencil and then later on I'll go over it with the uh, black paint marker. But I'm just trying to get an idea of the way that I want it. I'm making some markings in, towards the middle through, at the stem part. And about four lines coming down. And then a little couple little more on the bottom there. And the one all the way on the bottom. And I'm kind of curving that one a little bit. See when you when you say you can't draw, you're you're lying to yourself. <laughs> you can. It's not hard. You just gotta keep doing it. And, and be okay with not being perfect. So, remember that we're not using watercolor paper, so the paper is going to be, the, the watercolor is not going to move it as well as it would on watercolor paper. But um, I'm using a light gray, and before I add any other color, I'm going to make sure it's completely dry, otherwise it'll mud together. So I'm choosing to do a light gray and a, a blue, like a sky bluish color. When I'm heating or when I'm drying, I like to do the front and back. I don't know why, but that's just the way I like to use my heat gun. So I'm going to go through, this This paint is dry, I'm going to go through and I'm going to add some blue to it. Kind of just to add a little bit of texture. And then I just kind of get a feel for how I want it to look. <clears throat> if you find that you add a little bit too much paint or it's too wet, just take a paper towel and you can um, take off some of the moisture from your paper. That's what one of the things that the gesso helps with is that it doesn't soak into your paper completely. Um, and I'm just going around the edge with a little bit darker color same color just kind of adding a little bit of darkness to it and then again on the bottom here so this is my vase you can make it you know any color any style just have some fun and you know be creative with it if you're really that scared and you want to trace one go ahead but i encourage you just to give yourself a little bit of credit and go for it. So I'm just adding a little bit more gray back into it. And then I'm going to dry it because um, remember we want it to set. So I've pre-cut all my flowers out um, beforehand, except for I've decided um, because I did not leave room for what I the margin printable that I wanted to use. I'm gonna just cut it and look at that. It just covers up most of my oopsie, <laughs> and I'm gonna leave that there. Then I'm gonna use these flowers for the top part of my little bouquet, my little arrangement. So we're gonna do an arrangement in the vase. I'm gonna show you a placement, but if you feel like that's not what you like, then again, you know me, do your own thing. 
we're going to start placing the background foliage first. And what I recommend is kind of marking it out in three spaces. And in a second here, you'll see what I'm talking about. I'll, I decide to go ahead and draw. <laughs> my mind is all over. All right, I'm going to use my Posca marker or my paint marker, and I'm going to outline. Outlining the lines that I drew with the pencil because my paint is dry. You definitely have to wait for that to dry. I added a couple little dots there and then a couple thicker lines. Alright, so I'm just going to touch that up a little bit. Okay, so you will see that I am going to take the foliage first. <clears throat> we have plenty of cute little flowers, um, great colors. I love the color palette that we're using. And I, of course, I'm going to use my wet glue. I prefer to use that. So we're going to take... Now the reason why we're going to place the foliage first is it's kind of going to give us our outline. This is what we do in floral arranging. We kind of give ourselves a, a, an outline of where the flowers should be placed. So we don't, we want the flowers to stay within that kind of like triangle area. And I kind of like the way that one flower looks down there, but I don't think it's going to stay. And then you kind of look at the flow of the way you want your flowers to go. So I wanted to come over the container a little bit and I'm just going to place around the flowers. The bigger flower being towards the middle and in the bottom and then when you're doing this, if you want to just put a little bit of glue in the middle of the flower so that you can tuck other flowers underneath, or you can place them and then, uh, and then glue them. I find when I'm working with stuff like this, if I, don't, if I place them and I try to move them and replace them, it just doesn't look the same. So when I place it somewhere, I just go for it. And again, like I said, I'm just going to let them go over... Hang over a little bit. A cutie patootie right there. And just assembling them. And notice that I'm staying within that, um, that triangle with the foliage. Then I realized there's more that I didn't cut out. So I'm going to go ahead and do that very quickly. And I want to remind you, if you, if you want to um, be reminded of when new videos come out or a new product, then be sure to like and subscribe and to join the, uh, the Bible Journaling Ministry um, newsletter because um, you do get a free um, printable with that with, some, with uh, samples of what's in Momentum if, you know, if you're not. Uh, ready to purchase momentum yet, but you'd like to try to sample it out then um, Join the newsletter Tracy's really good about not you know doing a lot of mailings so you won't be bombarded with all that <laughs> And of course I always encourage you to um, Show us what you've done or kind of maybe just say you know, oh this inspired me to do this or or whatever um, to post pictures. We always love to see what you guys are working on. It's fun to, to go through and and see what everyone's doing. And as always this is a time for you to be just spending with the Lord and meditating on the verse, thinking about what it means to you, what stands out to you, what He wants to speak to you, during your creative um, 
worship time with the Lord. So I, I was going to add some black to this. Maybe you can um, add a little bit with some uh, with an ink pad and your stenc another stencil or something, or maybe black marks. Oh, I'm choosing to uh, use a piece of black ribbon. I just think to balance out the page, it needed a little bit more black to it. You can, uh, you know, try doing it that way. Adding two of the bigger flowers towards the bottom, just to use up those cute little flowers. You can use the washi tape on the paper that um, are on the printable. And then add that one cute little flower up there using all the smaller flowers. I'll use the other bigger flowers that are part of the printable set for um, maybe the uh, illustrated faith page. Maybe I'll do that. Or you can use it in a mixed media book if you don't have um, a Bible journal or journaling Bible. <laughs> so here this is what I was thinking about adding Maybe it's something with a little bit of black ink, but then I decide, um, to be honest with you, <laughs> this is one of the God moments because it was just sitting on my desk. This little piece of black ribbon that I had, it was crazy. I was like, okay, Lord, I'll, I'll just use that. I love when things work out, you know, like that. That is just kind of right in front of you. How many times do you... There it is. <laughs> it was just sitting there. How many times does that happen? God places something in front of you and you're like, you don't even realize, you know, because we're so busy searching other places that um, we don't see what's right in front of us. But I'm just going to add it to the, to the left side of the page. And then I'm going to make a little bow because I really like the way that flower looked on the pedestal of the vase, but um, I wanted to use the flower up top. So I'm going to show you how to make a really quick, easy bow. And I, I'm not sure because then I, you know, and, and when I'm doing my flower, my real fresh flower arrangements, I like to put bows in them. I don't know. I'm the cutesy girl over there. Um, so that also reminded me of what we, we would normally do is I would make a bow to put into the arrangement. So, um, so now I'm in a dilemma because I don't know <laughs> which way I want to do it. But all you need to do is grab, you can uh, grab the same color, but I had some twine that um, had the pink and the yellow and I thought it might be nice to add to the page too, just to give it a little extra something. So what you want to do is, I'm going to show you a real easy way. Normally I would make a bow, but because it was too short. So you just crisscross them and then push the other uh, back piece up. And then tie the ribbon around it. So it's just making a cross and then taking, you know, maybe you want to slow down that part a little bit so that you can see how I did it. And then you just tie the, the string around it in the knot. So see, I kind of like it there, and then so I was like, nah, it looks better there. It kind of balances a little bit better being up, uh, up there. And I'm going to just use regular my regular white glue in there. You probably want to use that instead of like the uh, glue stick because that probably wouldn't stay in your, in your Bible. All right, and I'm going to add a couple little touches. I hope that you've enjoyed this time together. I know I have, and um, I hope that you will show us um, what you have created. God bless you and keep you, and we will see you next time. Thank you, everyone. Take care.